Welcome back to the dish. Saratoga behind us. Breeders Cup in front of us. Summer waning, fall waxing, and about to wax poetic with the prince himself, the paddock prince, David Levitch. David, Saratoga, no more. Yeah, it was um, it was an interesting meet. This closing weekend was really good, obviously, with the weather. It's kind of sad to always see Saratoga go, but I think I can speak for a lot of people and say I think a lot of people wanted Saratoga to be over, whether it was for all the off the turfs, their wallet, or many other things. But, yeah, moving on to Churchill, Belmont at the Big A. So um, it was a fun summer. We meet Saratoga, obviously, with some negatives, but I guess that's part of it sometimes. All right. Uh, well, Delmar are still, uh, I guess, the last bastions of – Summer down in Southern California, I'm sure you'll still have that covered, uh, but we do have Kentucky Downs, and I'm hoping maybe some Virginia Derby action on the print sheets this week. Yeah, I'll probably do. Yeah, I got Kentucky Downs Thursday, Saturday, and then um, Del Mar's got four days left, obviously, with their grade ones for two-year-olds this weekend, and um, I'll probably check out the uh, Virginia Derby, which I'm guessing is Saturday. That's right. Was it on a Saturday last year? Was it on like a Monday or something? I think it was one like on a Monday. It was a Tuesday. Tuesday. Tuesday, because I or remember maybe even a Wednesday, but it was Labor Day week as they they closed the show. Yeah, was, yeah, the horse during the week. Yeah, the horse that won the race is retired now. Compensus. Uh, is that a Pletcher? It was, but it only came out like two weeks ago, so that's why I remember. But I remember it being on a weekday. But who's running in that race? Oh man, three year olds. That's that's good right there. That's top quality. I mean, you got so many races these days. You just had the race at Saratoga on Friday for three year olds that um, Carl Spackler won. Then you just yeah. had the Dueling Grounds Derby, which um, so that was ten more horses. So I was just I was Del Mar Derby, Del Mar Derby. Um, yeah. So I was just curious yeah, who's a lot, up. a lot of three year olds. Uh, from what I heard, I think they're expecting not they're expecting a not small field. So I don't. I, Based on that, I'm sure that means it's not going to be like 12 or 14, but at least it won't be, you know, five or six. Yeah, that's good. But so many races going on. But, yeah, looking forward to that as well. All right. Yeah, that's this weekend. And then many weekends from now, but certainly a, a big spot on the calendar is the Breeders' Cup Classic. And, David, we had the Travers two weeks ago. This past weekend, Jockey Club Gold Cup and Pacific Classic. Uh, I thought both races were okay. Uh, but as we look at your top 10, uh, I agree with you uh, mostly. I mean, I mean, we have them shuffled a little bit. Uh, I have Archangelo 2, White Barrio 1, Proxy 3. But basically, we do have the same top three. They come out of three different races. Uh, actually, maybe I have Bright Future a little ahead of Proxy. But I did think, and based on looking where you have them ranked, you agree. I did think the Jockey Club Gold Cup was slightly better than the Pacific Classic. Yeah, no, I thought the Jockey Club Gold Cup was a really good race. I was I was a little doubtful about Bright Future going into the race because of how bad he ran in the Brooklyn without Lasix, but obviously that was just a race you tossed. He didn't like the 12 furlongs because he came back with a big win in the um, allowance race at Saratoga, and then he ran another really good race in the mile and a quarter in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. I have him six. The reason I've had Proxy a little higher is Proxy's a very consistent horse that kind of just – he takes a while to get going for some reason. And I, I really liked him Saturday, and he was actually a good price in that race. He ended up going off it. I think he was in the 7-2 and two range, something like that. I just have him a little higher than Bright Future because, I don't know, he's a more consistent horse. I want to see – I think Bright Future's training up to the Classic, which obviously we won't get to see him run again. So I'm that's why I have him a little higher. Obviously, Wide Barrio is probably first or second on a lot of people's lists. I don't know how I feel about the Whitney outside of his big performance, and he's not going to be running for another three months after basically not running for almost four months. No, three months. Yeah, yeah so uh, I don't in, know. In uh, style layoff for him. Uh, as I said, we have uh, a lot of the same names up top, uh, just shuffled a little bit. I have the Jockey Club Gold Cup pair right behind Weta Barrio and Arcangelo, uh, then the Pacific Classic pair right behind them, both at 15 to one. I thought go rocket ride, uh, you know, to me and Mike Shuddy said this when we did the preview uh, for the uh, super screener, you know, Mandela, his style, uh, he thought that it might be the type of race where, you know, they didn't necessarily need to win and him ending up having to chase Arabian night. 
I wouldn't think that's going to be the plan in the classic, but it sort of worked out for the Pacific classic. He got his raise. I wouldn't be shocked to see the, the tides turn on those two. Having said all that, I don't think either one of them is as good as Archangelo or White Barrio. No, I agree. I think the time the bet um, Arabia Night was in the Pacific Classic, he was second off the layoff. You just kind of looked like he was going to get loose. He did get loose on the lead. Um, Go Rocket Ride was kind of inside of horses. I think he'll just continue to get better. If Arabia Night had any pressure in that race, I don't think he wins the race because he did get to kind of do things his own way. So I agree with you on that front completely. I was I don't know what to do with the funded at this point. He just I, yeah. I, he kind of I had him eight on my list. I guess I could probably had Zandon or somebody like that there, but he seems to be getting a little sour. So it'll be interesting to see even he, if he even shows up in the um, fall and to even try the Breeders' Cup. So out of out of that race, I just want the three year olds. Well, and speaking of uh, what to do with the horse and three year olds, you have Forte fifth. Uh, I dropped him a, a little bit more than that just because I wanted to, to give the horses I thought ran really well this weekend uh, merit and put them ahead of him. But I, I wouldn't say I've given up on him by any means, whereas I dropped Mage way down after that Travers. Uh, you, from what you've heard or seen and knowing Pletcher, et cetera, you think he'll run again or is he going to train up to the classic like Mage? I saw a thing that said that Pletcher liked the way he ran in the Belmont off a layoff, so they're going to train him up to the um, Classic, and that seems like that's what everybody's doing now. So yeah. I don't know what these preps, like the um, Woodward and some of these races, the Lucas <laughs> Classic and I, the Awesome again, I don't know what who's going to be running in these races, but it seems yeah. like most of the players are going to be um, – skipping in and training up to the breeder's cup which is kind of a shame because races like the woodward and the mainly the woodward i guess the awesome again as well those used to be races that everybody pointed to now it's just more worried about the classic but right it may be just I bubble think, wrap. Uh, i wouldn't be shocked to see skippy in one of those uh you know, on the charlestown classic I, I would think they'll give him a shot to cash some more checks and and maybe uh get a classic berth and then yeah, I mean, the and we still have the Pennsylvania Derby, uh, which is a grade one restricted to three-year-olds, but, you know, I wouldn't be shocked. The Cox if, horses run. Yeah, uh, um, you know, if horses run well there. Incredible. They're, they're going to take a look, and why not? I mean, Archangelo, in my mind, definitely the leader of the division, but, you know, if you're able to win the Pennsylvania Derby and the Classic, beating older uh, at a mile and a quarter, uh, maybe you can get the championship from Archangelo. I, yeah, I think Archangelo, I'm guessing he'll train up just like because his trainer trained him up to the Travis, yeah. but I completely agree. I think he's the best horse right now, regardless of any division. I'm not saying he's more talented than White Barrio, but I trust him a little more at 10 furlongs than I do White sure. Barrio. The Whitney was such an odd race to me because you had Cody's Wish, an overwhelming favorite. He didn't show up. White Barrio got this like perfect trip. Now, he did run a 112 and he ran great, but. I don't know. It was kind of like that was the time to have him. I kind of want to see him do it again. And I don't know. He's not my type of horse going to come. The interesting question will be, who will Irad ride? Why to Barrio or Forte? I mean, that's three months away. And everybody was wrong about I think everybody thought Javier was going to ride Mage, and he didn't. So I don't know. That'll be, I guess it'll be interesting to see who Irad rides. No, and he, uh, I mean, Irad's going to have other mounts and big races leading up to it. And I mean, you never know if someone's just running out of their skin. He's like, man, I got to stay on this one. Now, you know, the relationship with Pletcher, Rapoli, et cetera, I, I guess in my mind leans toward Forte, but yeah, he, he's going to have more than two options would be, would be my guess. But uh, that's uh, what are we six and a half weeks away? Yeah. Something like that. No, no, eight weeks, aren't we? Oh, first that far week? away? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, that's we got right. yeah, we're still pretty early September. Well, yeah, we got it'll be weeks. here before we know it. Yes, it will. Anything else of uh, note from your, your Saratoga? No, I, not for my Saratoga. <laughs> um, I thought the two-year-olds were super impressive this meet. It really seemed like later in the meet you had those big-time um, – you had Locked, you had Fierceness, you had the Chad Brown horse, who you probably don't like because of the um, – the buyer speed figure from the Valentine's candy race got uh, upgraded. And the majority, I think, what was that horse's name? The Clarevich horse the other day, but it seemed like the two-year-olds really started to get going at Saratoga that could lead into some good races going into the champagne and the um, breeders futurity and all those races. Yeah. And it seems like for two-year-olds, that's still uh, that weekend is definitely still the, the weekend to prep for the breeders cup. Whereas, you know, for, for older males, uh man i mean it's just 
you either run in, in late August or September, even earlier in White of Barrio's case, and you're done. Um, you know, we'll see a few names, obviously, but yeah, the, the prep schedule Not is many. totally different from even five years ago. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I, when we were talking about, I can't even think of older horses pointing to races. I, I think you mentioned um, Skippy. I'm sure Zandon charge it. Oh, yeah, They'll keep trying. Zandon's a good call. I mean, there's got to be a few. Let me, let me pull mine back up here. Uh, Is Taba even training anymore? He did. A, I I looked and he he had um, he was seen on the track. I forget if it was a published workout or not. So. Um, I left him on just because he has figures that if, you know, Baffert has a good awesome again with him, he's going to be in the mix. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked to see Senor Buscador again, only because to me. Rattle and Roll will probably run twice before the class. If you're those connections with a horse like that, like, why wouldn't you just, I mean, even if you're going to close for third to get a $50,000 check and a grade one, uh, I wouldn't be shocked to see him again. But yeah, I mean, I, I would think. Of my top top nine, I don't know what the Japanese horse has planned. Of my top nine, none of those horses are going to run again before the Classic. Maybe Mc. I would, I, yeah, I was going to say Rattle and Roll definitely be in the Lucas Classic because oh, that's true. Terrible. Yeah, run out of the stall. Yeah, and he was terrible in the Jockey Club. There's no way they're going to run him off a layoff in the Classic after how bad he ran off a layoff in the um, Jockey Club the other day. So I, I would expect – I mean, he was terrible, and I expect to see him again probably. Well, uh, one thing uh, for certain is we will not have a 2-5 to five like last year in flight line. And I'm going to close it out with this because I saw him on both our lists. Bottom half, granted, but I looked up the, the numbers from the Travers and Tappa Trice – if there's speed, I'm not giving up on him. He's I'm not either. And he right? ran, honestly, he ran the second best race in the uh, Travers by far. He did not break well. He rushed up three wide, and he sat three wide the entire race and made the first move. I don't know if he's going to figure it out by the Classic, but he is 100% the horse to use underneath, or maybe even if you think there's enough pace. He seems like the one horse that, like, like, I don't know if we've seen the best of Forte. I probably maybe Mage definitely. I don't know if he can, but he's like the one three year old outside of Archangelo that I feel like can just keep getting better. But he's mentally, he's got to break better. Yeah, great point. All right. Well, that's uh, an early look at the Breeders' Cup Classic. Some alignment, uh, as always, come down to price, but we got plenty of weeks to sort that out. And as for this week, Delmar, Kentucky Downs and Virginia Derby. Uh, will that be separate, or are you going to bonus that into the the sheets? No, I'll probably do. I'll probably do the whole card um, for Virginia Derby Day. Love it. Yeah, I'll check it out. There's not much going on this weekend, so we might as well look at that and try to do that. And then, um, yeah, we got next week. We got Churchill Open and Thursday with. Um, I'm just going to call it Aqueduct Opens Thursday as well. I know they call it Belmont at Big A, but we got that next Thursday as well. So be interesting. I'm glad Churchill's back open. So that'll be fun. Obviously, being from here, it'll be fun to go back to the races. Very much. Uh, yeah. Looking forward to that being back in Louisville. And uh, good to have you back on the dish. We'll talk next week. Thank you.